Hey, this is Nate Story with Bright Eye Tech, and today we're going to continue this series on vertical plane versus horizontal plane, and we're going to talk about labor. Now, the important thing to understand before I dig into this video is you have to understand that when we talk about labor, what we're talking about is a lot of different processes, each contributing a little bit to the whole of the problem. And so when we talk about these, there's, there's not one solution that is going to fix the labor problem in these indoor growing uh, environments. What there is, though, is, is the ability to analyze our processes, think about how we design equipment, how we're growing our crops, and figure out how to save money in a lot of small places that all together equal a lot of money. So diving right into this, I want to start off by saying that when we talk about labor, especially in an indoor growing environment or a greenhouse growing environment, the, the solution is almost always to move the product or the process, uh, the product to the process. Okay, so instead of taking the process out into the growing environment and and taking it to the products, uh, what we do is we take the products out of the environment and we deliver them to the process. This is way more economical because a lot of the equipment, a lot of the labor, a lot of the specialized things involved in that process can be difficult to move and can cost you a lot when you try to to move them out into the growing environment. So this is kind of the theme that, that essentially underlies almost all of our assumptions and a lot of our design principles when we build equipment. Um, our goal is to build things that we can move around the growing environment, and we do that for a number of different reasons. Uh, one is for planting. When we have to take seedlings out and move it out into a very large warehouse growing operation, out into that environment, it impacts uh, the speed uh, at which we can plant, we're carrying things out. Instead of moving the plants, we're moving the people, and we're moving kind of the process, right? So the idea here is that if we can take an entire zip rack, an entire, uh, you know, and, and most vertical plane production techniques allow us to move the equipment around. So if we can do that, then we can move an entire rack with 30 towers on it, something like that, one person to a planting bench, plant all those towers, replace them, and move them back out into the environment. It's very, very efficient from a labor perspective. The other thing is plant maintenance. So for those of you that are producers, you're, you're familiar, I'm just gonna use an example here. There are lots of examples, but the one that comes to mind the fastest and most simply is re-entry interval, okay? Those of you that are growers are familiar with re-entry intervals. It's basically the, the time limit you place on being able to re-enter a growing environment after you spray. So um, what we're able to do by being able to move these things around, because uh, you know, again, vertical plane production uh, lends itself to this type of an application, is we can actually take racks, wheel them into treatment tents, spray them in the tent, impose an REI on that very small amount of the system, that small tent, and still maintain um, the functionality of the main system. We can have laborers out there, they can be working, we can be doing things out there. We don't have to shut the whole facility down just because we sprayed one tiny part of it. So this is a benefit. Again, we're thinking about how we design the system in a way that allows us to compartmentalize certain things. Treatments, uh, planting, uh, disruptions to the system. All of these things can be compartmentalized even when it's sharing uh, the general growing environment with a lot of other racks. The other thing to think about is cost of access. And this is a huge one. Greenhouse producers have been thinking about this for a long time and they have it down, okay? But because this is a new industry and a lot of people haven't thought about this, you have to think about the cost of accessing your product. So it's almost like, um, you know, think of it this way. It's the time people spend walking. It's the time people spend in scissor lifts. It's the time people spend doing things um, that cost you money that aren't necessarily productive, right? So when we're designing a greenhouse, a lot of the time what we're doing is we're designing um, entry points and then we're designing all of our production uh, space in a way that it gives us the fastest possible access to certain products, right? Um, because time walking can be a lot of time and almost anyone can plot this out. Plot out your uh, area, measure the number of feet, and then time yourself walking. And you can generally get a solid idea of what it's actually gonna cost you in money uh, for your employees to be walking out and checking on plants. This is a real cost. And a lot of growing environments have very long rows where access becomes more and more expensive. Additionally, when you're on scissor lifts going up and down, you spend a lot of time, because these things are not fast, right? You spend a lot of time going up and down uh, to access produce that you wouldn't otherwise have to spend. 
When we do vertical plane production, we can check everything from the ground. So we can basically stand at ground level and do visual confirmation that plants are healthy, check on pests, check on deficiencies, that kind of thing. And that saves us a lot of money. The last thing is um, a special cost. Of course, these are the cost of, of buying scissor lifts, of, of giving yourself that kind of access in a growing environment, robotics, all of this mechanization, and then of course risk, because all of these things can be dangerous, right? Using scissor lifts, a little dangerous. It's a wet environment, it's not an environment that's conducive to people um, moving around a lot on wet floors, you know, with at height, uh, with kind of all these other things, right? So there's a lot of risk involved. These are all costs that we need to think very carefully about before we uh, start doing any type of horizontal plane production. That's pretty much it. That, that is a short synopsis of the labor costs involved in horizontal plane and how we solve them by going to a vertical plane and especially a modular vertical plane. I really hope that this information is useful for, uh, to you. If you like this type of info, if you want to learn more, check out Upstart University. It's our online learning platform that we're developing to try and get this information out there. Also, feel free to leave us questions. We love hearing from you guys and we really enjoy answering your questions.